Say hello to the new SwimOutlet.com. Enhanced navigation, larger, higher resolution imagery, more filtering and search capability so you can find what you need faster. As always, low price guarantee and free shipping on $49. The redesigned SwimOutlet.com. Dive in, say hi. Welcome to the Morning Swim Show on Tuesday, July 29th, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Earlier this year, Swimming World removed the names of East German women from our list of the World and European Swimmers of the Year in an attempt to set a precedent we hope will lead to the International Olympic Committee stripping the East German female swimmers of the medals they won at the 1976 Olympics. As you may know, the East German women were part of a systematic, doping, a systematic doping regime in the 1970s and 1980s, boosting their strength and endurance capacity artificially. The regime was so advanced at the time that none of the top East German women were caught with positive drug tests and ran away with the gold medals at the 1976 Olympics. We want to renew our call for the IOC to look into stripping these medals today with an extensive interview with an American swimmer who was denied a better medal in Montreal because of the East German doping. Wendy Bolio won bronze in the 100 fly in 1976 behind two East Germans, but she rallied with three of her teammates to win gold in the 400 free relay that has become one of the most memorable swim races of all time. In this interview from 2008, Bolio tells of her experiences in Montreal and her participation in a documentary that visited with East Germans about 30 years after the Olympics, in which a former competitor refused to apologize for doping. Today's guest, 1976 member of USA's women's Olympic swim team, Wendy Bullio, was part of the documentary produced by 13 WNET New York for an upcoming PBS Secrets of the Dead episode called Doping for Gold. She was unable to join us in the studio, but we have her on the line right now from her home in Seattle. Thanks for joining us, Wendy. My pleasure. Thank you, Brent. Take us back to 1976, or maybe the year before. There was so much speculation in the air about what's going on with the East Germans. USA swimmers are on top of the world. You got possibly the finest team ever assembled. Oh, I believe that. I mean, we had the leaders in, in uh, Karen Mo Thornton and, and Kim Payton, Jill Sterkel, Shirley Babishoff. So we had a team of 21 women, ranging from the age of 16 to me and Karen being the oldest at 21. But you know, going into those games and coming out of the Olympic trials one month before, uh, we were absolutely the best ever assembled U.S. women's swimming team put together. We find out 32 years later that, there were, that they were systematically doped. Actually, 10,000 athletes in East Germany, through their school system, through identification of their talents, were systematically put on steroids that weren't even tested on animals or mice. I know. Unbelievable. Uh, it was absolutely unbelievable when the wall came down in 1989 and then the Stasi reports were, were put out and, and actually didn't ever really name names, but a lot of those women swimmers came back and said, boy, here's what we took. Many of them have, have, have come forward and criminal charges were put against the doctors and the coaches, but yeah, I mean, every, really when you get right down to it, it, it didn't just happen in 76, it was happening in 72 and in the 60s and actually later into the 50s. What was interesting to me was that this was East German system. Uh, and when East Germany no longer existed, Germany as a united country decided not to sweep this under the rug and they were going to address it. They awarded 167 athletes monetary compensation for that. But yet, here in the rest of the world, FINA and the United States, they're just not stepping up. No, I agree. <laughs> But it's been a long. It's it, you're absolutely right in that in that they haven't. And you do wonder, Brent, if this had been grabbed a hold of years ago, would um, would the drug performance enhancing drug controversy in all sports on all levels be happening today? I think with FINA um, and, and USOC and and IOC not not looking at it and really at least making. Um, the record books reflect that, whether it's, you know, uh, look, I think if, if you talk to any of those Olympic athletes from 76, and I'll just speak on behalf of the women swimmers, I, I personally, myself, I don't, I don't want my gold, I don't want a gold medal in place of my bronze. I won my bronze, but boy, in the world record books, you think you could put an asterisk. I think that has 
put a lot of those women from that 76 team very far from the swimming world today. And we talk about the impact that it had on you personally and on the USA team, but it also affected Canada and the Netherlands. But the real travesty here is the German women who did not know they were a part of this. Absolutely. I, I, and I can say that because I was there um, last summer. I had the opportunity to talk to several Olympic athletes from the 1976 and then, then one of the women from 80 and one of the women who is now a man from 1984. Um, it, it was devastating for them because they were told this is what we had to do. And we weren't told a question. We took what we were told. Um, and, and that was just the state plan. That is just everyone was in the same boat. This, is, this was our life one. It, we were listening to our coaches and our swimming clubs like you would listen to your coach or your parents. We never questioned it. Now, I feel really badly for them. I do. It's horrific what these women have endured and their families have endured and their children, and that will transcend into their children's children. But it's still, as I, at the end of the day, um, I, I walked away from that and those interviews that I did with a real sick feeling in my stomach, as bad as I felt for them. What happened wasn't right. It wasn't right. And, and even though they suffered greatly and continue to suffer greatly, and yes, they were victims, but you know what? It doesn't make it right. And that, that's how I walked away from it. I look at my Olympic gold medal and my bronze medal, and I go, God, I've got healthy kids. I am healthy. I am fit. I never cheated, did it the right way, and, you know, everybody lives with that. Well, I do want to talk about those medals. You won the bronze and the 100 fly. The only two people that beat you were East Germans. Asterisk or no asterisk, under clean conditions, you should have had that gold. Oh, I know, and my, my mother reminds me that every time I talk to her. She's 88 years old. <laughs> I look at it, and, and I know it, Brent. I mean, I know that was a gold. Um, and I was so proud. I was so thrilled beyond belief to win a medal in those games, um, an individual medal, which means so much to me. And, and you're right. I mean, it should be a gold. But in my mind and in my head, it was a gold. And no one can take that away from me. The 1976 USA women's Olympic team was, was right to cry foul, Wendy. Uh, you set nine American records at those Olympic Games, only to have the East Germans win every time through an orchestrated drug program. They claimed 10 of 11 individual races, but there was one race left, the 400 free relay. Take us back there. Boy, leading up to that, um, we, just got, we just got beaten every day. Not in terms of American records that we were, we were. And I think one of the hardest things, Brent, that we faced that whole week was awful press awful press and um, you know there were a few of us that were rather outspoken because we knew in our heart of hearts that this that there was something not right <laughs> going into that final that final day it was the last night of u.s swimming we all felt as a team that was probably our very last olympic games we'd ever compete in and you know you get to the point where we worked and tried so hard that whole week we gave our best performances um that boy going in that that night walking into that soundproof booth room that they keep you the holding room let's hold it right there because i want to frame that going into the last event the east germans already held the world record with a time of 348.0 80 that is um, the u.s held the olympic record uh which was six seconds slower from the previous olympics that's a huge margin to overcome Though at the time, uh, that record was set four years, four years ago, like I said. Babishoff was the only one returning, if I recall that right. Uh, the odds were truly against the USA team. But yet, you guys wanted so desperately to put a dagger into the heart of that living nightmare you were going through. Oh, oh you better believe it. Jack Nelson, our head coach of, of our women that year, um, set us all down. And they set us down every week, but certainly that last, last night, you have a chance to make history here, girls. What's it going to be? And we knew we all had to swim out of our minds. We all had to make and have our personal best swims. And even then, Brent, there was a shot that we weren't even going to make it. And what we all did as a group of young women was we all went above and swam, above and beyond what we ever thought we could do because we had nothing to lose and everything to gain. And, um, God, that was exciting. 
Well, let's listen to what Jack Nelson had to say about that. We have him on tape here. Our girls were honestly bothered by the fact that they had been the greatest team in, in the world for a while, and then suddenly the East Germans just are blowing us away. And we spent, we, the coaches and I, we spent time with the girls saying, look, we can win this relay. What was so outstanding was they won with their minds. They didn't worry about, uh, you know, the East Germans at this point. They were worried about America winning, and they did, and people went bonkers. And, and the thing about it is uh, they, they were truly, truly great Americans during that during that relay, and and they had no fear, no fear at that point. They, they, those four girls, Kim, Wendy, Jill, and Shirley, they broke the world record by four seconds. The coaches, and this is, I'm sorry about this, but a number of the coaches would look away when they saw me, they would look away because they themselves did not understand what these girls had achieved. They themselves didn't recognize the fact that we had been cheated to the limit. Wendy, what goes through your mind when you hear Jack Nelson, the head coach of that team, relive that point in time? I can never forget that. I can never forget standing on the block and and hearing our national anthem play for the first time all week for women's swimming and we stood up there and you know you just think of all the things in your life that put you in that place at the right time and for that brief moment in olympic history and in swimming history it was us, and it was, it was unbelievable. It was absolutely unbelievable. Wendy, when, when you look at the documentary, which, by the way, is absolutely fabulous, you had the opportunity to go to Germany and meet with your competitors, especially Petra Tumor. Now, in the documentary, you're sitting with her, and you decide to confront the whole issue that it's been proven now, and she didn't even acknowledge it or apologize for it. And she went on to say... How do, we, how do we not know that you weren't? How do we know that you weren't clean? Oh, yeah, that was pretty incredible. <laughs> um, it took me aback, um, refused to apologize. I mean, I spent a day and a half with her, um, both on camera and off camera, and even off camera, I was thinking she would give me you know, some little something, but she would not. Her whole world was about, and still is about today, East Germany. She is not a converted um, German. She is she is really East German. She will stand by um, her country no matter what. Uh, it was interesting because she looked at me and, and you saw it in the in the interview. How do we know that you didn't do it? And I I looked at her and and I said, Well, of course we didn't do that. And she said, Well, then how did you win? How'd you beat us? If, if we were all doing it, then uh, how could you have won? Yeah, it was like, oh my gosh, I was not prepared for that. Unfortunately, I think the viewers are going to see that because you were taken back by uh, that after the Stasi Files revealed it, after the courts awarded compensation 167 athletes. There's just that stalwart attitude that's, that's still there. Oh my gosh. Uh, Brent, when I came that final night, and we taped that at the at the pool, we did a various things. We went into their museum where they showed the little blue pill and the little pink pill, and you know she breezed by that. Um, and honestly, here's a little side note. I said, at what point, Petra, did you look at your body as a 15, 16 year old and go, boy, I just don't look like anybody else in my town. I kind of look like my brother. And she looked at me and she said, Wendy, we trained harder than you ever did. And by the way, we had an interpreter for this, but I will never be convinced that she didn't know full-blown English because she was smiling at different things I was saying and then, of course, waiting for the interpreter to, to relay it back. 
And at one point, um, she actually looked at me and she said, you know, um, I just figured that you guys, your team, your team of Shirley and Sturkle and what was that other girl's name, and you just didn't train as hard as we did. That's why we beat you. She said, that's what we thought. I still think that today. Well, that's a very powerful documentary. Uh, what do you hope comes from the efforts that PBS is doing to keep this story alive, Wendy? Oh, I, I, you know, I was so thrilled when they called and asked me, and I've done several different things over the years. M my goal, I should say, is, is to keep it in front of, of this country. I think get it in front constantly, never let anyone forget. Not, not so much what happened um, to, to us as American athletes. But, you know, you, there's a generation and continues to be generations of young boys and girls in this country who believe that it, this is okay to do. This can show the health effects. Wake up, you guys. If you take this stuff, look at what's happened to these athletes. Well, it's well documented, and I don't know what else to say other than the story. It, it just cannot die. Uh, I recommend that all of our viewers do everything they can do to see this on May 7th. Yes, it, it's powerful. You bet. Thanks for joining us, Wendy. I appreciate it, and I'm sure everyone in the swimming community appreciates it.